Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Now the other day I ran across a channel by Everett Anderson and Everett was doing a video on one of Sleeping Warrior's latest uh, attempts. I thought it was pretty good and I wanted you guys to see it. The video is not very long, it's only about five minutes and uh, I'm going to do a little commentary through it and I'll be back at the end with some final thoughts. But a link to Everett's channel will be in the, uh, in the comments. Hop over there and have a look at some of the other stuff Everett's doing. And if you feel like it, give him a like and subscribe. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. And Gladys. <coughs> this time, we're just going to sit back and watch this dumpster fire. We all know that gravity is not a force. Even if it was, it doesn't hold the atmosphere onto the Earth. Because it isn't capable of doing it, it's not nearly strong enough. Remember, gravity is proportionate to the mass. So the smaller the mass, the smaller the force. Gas particles are minuscule. They travel at high velocity. They require a force equal to the mass. Wrong as usual, Anthony. Every object in the universe attracts every other object. Gravity acting between the Earth and any other object is directly proportional to the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates the objects. Get it right, will you? We know that the force of gravity as per Cavendish was a 50 millionth of the object's weight, and it was not greater than. So for all of these little gas particles that are all buzzing around the Earth, that all weigh a gnat's dick, then you've got a 50 millionth of a gnat's dick that's working against these force, these atoms that are all bouncing around everywhere. It isn't nearly enough. You're the dick, Anthony. You're still misrepresenting Cavendish. You're just outright lying about it. To put it in simple terms, the large 348 pound balls in the Cavendish experiment are pulling on very small 1.61 pound balls, but they're pulling it with a force that is 1 50 millionth of the Earth pulling on those same small balls. When Earth pulls on them, we call it their weight, you dummy. But what I'm gonna show you is how ballers cannot scale at all when it comes to the gas pressure in the atmosphere point. Here we have Mick West's wonderful gas calculator. I didn't know this existed until very recently. And you can see that planet G, big G, is gravity. And uh, we know gravity is not a force. So what we'll do, we'll turn gravity off because you can't have any gravity. And that's really what's really happening with our atmosphere on your model. So with no gravity, basically there is no atmosphere. You do get particles colliding with the Earth periodically, every now and again. But there is no atmosphere, right? The, the Earth's gravitational pull can pull all these things in. The problem is though, when you flick the gravity off, because we know that gravity is not a force, watch what happens. Where the fuck's the atmosphere going? It's going out in all directions, isn't it? Now you're getting it, Anthony. Without gravity, we can't have an atmosphere. We got an atmosphere, what do you think that means, big boy? So for all you morons that think that you don't need to have um, an explanation for this because you don't need to have a container or whatever, a density gradient proves that it doesn't blah blah this and blah blah that. You can't have the density gradient unless you've got some kind of containment because it fucks off into space. This is what it does with no gravity, right? Take a plastic bottle to the top of a 14,000 foot mountain and seal it. Then take the bottle down close to sea level and the atmospheric pressure will crush it. Why? Because the atmosphere above the bottle at 14,000 feet does not weigh as much as the atmosphere does down closer to sea level. That's the pressure gradient that we observe. you fucking retard gravity have you ever heard of fucking gravity 
Gravity! Gravity! You get your density gradient from the fact that it's, dyna it's dynamic, it's mixed up by the sun, the hydrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, everything's all being mixed up by the sun and all of those creation of gases, all at surface level. That's where the density gradient comes from. And it's so obvious and intuitive that we live on, a, on under or in some kind of containment and call it dome or whatever, who cares? It has to be this way because you can't have gas pressure without a container. you fucking retard gravity have you ever heard of fucking gravity 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 well let's see how you did anthony you don't understand gravity that comes as no surprise and you're still lying about the cavendish experiment that doesn't come as any surprise either. You don't understand how gas behaves. Okay. I don't know how many times I need to show you guys gas pressure in an open system. An open pipe. The very thing you said couldn't happen, happens. But the beautiful part was, you took the simulator and you proved the reason why gravity has to exist. We have to have it in order to have an atmosphere. Congratulations, Sleeping Warrior. Allow us to present you the Cletus. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. And get over to Everett's channel and subscribe to him too. Don't forget that we got a Patreon account. If you feel like con contributing, please do so. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys. We're out of here.